Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today, we have a more serious video, more financial video and it is my Frugal Living in Singapore series 2. In this month, I want to say that I'm very proud of myself because it's the month of uh, Lunar Chinese New Year. I've been spending a lot of time at home and with my family and we have been going to house visitings. So it's like dinner and lunch are provided. <laughs> I'm not saying Chinese New Year is all about the free food and whatsoever, but you have to understand this is a series called Frugal Living in Singapore. In this video, we will be talking about monetary value. So if you're not comfortable with that, I'll see you in four days time where I'll be showing you my staycation with the four star hotel in Singapore. So let's begin dissecting my month of February income and expenses. I'm very proud of myself, I stayed within the budget. So a side note for those people who are new to this channel or new to you know this video, I am a full-time specialist course student. I do receive sponsorship allowance from the government. I have worked three years before this, so I kind of know how to manage my personal finance very well. <laughs> Without further ado, let me just dissect this whole thing for you and you will begin to understand. Anyway, total cash outflow $4,932.35 of which 82% goes to investment. So I bought some REITs and I also deposited $300 into ETFs. In the month of February, my investment portfolio hasn't been doing very well at all. And that's a very sad thing, but you know, I'm not very bothered by that yet. I believe there will be like an upturn anytime soon, maybe in the next quarter. I have no idea. That's just a side note. If I take out the investment side and just look at what I've spent in total, excluding my investments, 46% goes towards insurance, 25% goes towards food, which is very, 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 very low because it's Chinese New Year and we have like good food, hot pot, steamboat, um, yeah, all the CNY snacks, very unhealthy, so I gained some weight too, haha. <laughs> 9% on drinks, mostly bubble tea again. It has been so bad, like I feel like I just counted how many bubble teas I've drank in the month of February and considering that in Chinese New Year, those three days, bubble tea stores are closed and in February, there's only 28 days. So of the remaining 25 days, I have drank at least, or at least those bubble tea that I have paid for, 13 bubble teas, which is crazy. It's like me drinking a bubble tea every other day. And this is something that I hope to work on myself. Anyway, 8% goes towards IT related or electronics content because I'm attending this e-commerce degree and we have to pay for our own web hosting. This amount, I believe I can reimburse it back from, you know, the school. So for now, it's still a cash outflow. I haven't received any form of claims yet so i'm just gonna leave it there seven percent goes towards transport of which one was grab trip that i've spent like fourteen dollars and thirty cents on but if you put that aside i actually spend very 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 little on public transport because chinese new year my parents are driving haha <laughs> so i kind of have free transportation for that few days Remaining of which $20 goes towards the gym and $7.13 goes towards Hossi. Very cute, I love her. In terms of income, $600 comes from sponsorship allowance. It's supposed to be $1,002. However, I started after the mid of January, so they kind of like prorated it. For red packets for Chinese New Year, I actually did a video of me counting money ASMR if you like to watch that. After which, I believe I counted to like $869 in that video and that was for the first 4 days of Chinese New Year. After that, there are some visitors who came and 
gave us a few more red packets. So total amounting to $947 from blessings from the elders. And $37.97 from my one of my read dividends. And I am just like super duper happy because if you exclude my investments, for the whole month of February, I've only spent $809.34 on things that are not investments, which also gives me the remaining of $700 and $78.72 for like the remaining cash that I can play with. Of course, I've put like $4,000 plus dollars into investment and to me, even though that's like a bank cash outflow, I feel like the amount will eventually increase over the months <laughs> and I'll update you guys on that. Remember during the last video, I was being such a chicken, I didn't dare to calculate my net worth. I'm gonna review to you my decrease in net worth after January. Okay, so in the month of January, I actually did this while I spent in a month video. At the point of time, my allowance wasn't in yet and my total net worth uh, <laughs> actually decreased by... 0.94% no, in monetary value, dollar value, uh, it decreased by $853.95 after January. Now, at the end of February, I have an increase of 0.92% in my current net worth, a $834.06 increase in dollar value and that just brings me back to square one at the end of december 2020 so back to square one guys haha ha. i mean at least i don't i didn't go down deeper and i feel like the reason why i'm not even doing as well in this month is also because of my investment at the beginning of February, it was doing well and suddenly like the market correction starts and everything starts going downhill. So you know, this is like the bad side of investing. So I'm back to square one. My current net worth is $91,252.90 and I'm, I was still trying to reach 100k by my birthday. I think it will be a very huge challenge considering the amount of bubble tea that I have been buying. Initially, I wanted to find a part-time job to be a private tutor but at the same time, the market for private tutoring is just so saturated and all the parents are low-balling, to be honest. <laughs> so like, you know, if I side note a bit, it's still about monetary, so it's in this video. I was actually tutoring when I was in university on top of my parents' allowance, I wanted to make more money because I want to be able to travel the world, which I did. I went to, you know, a few different new places that I've never been before. At that point of time, when I was teaching like a primary 3 or 4 kid, math and science, I was charging at $35, 30 to $35 per hour. In today's context, to be tutoring a primary three or four, which is kind of like in the elementary school kids, math and science, the market rate is only around $25. If you are not MOE certified, aka if you are not a teacher teaching in school. So this is also part of the reason why I haven't been able to find a part-time job yet. Not that I have been actively searching, but I probably should if I want to reach my goal of 100k by July, which is very hard. Yeah, if not, that's all for this video. I will see you in my next one. My next one, oh my god, my laptop almost fell. The next one will be on my staycation. Come staycation with me and I'll show you my room tour and everything. It's actually my fiancé now. Oops, not wearing the ring. Haha. <laughs> it's actually my fiancé's and I's end of 9 year, which is start of 10th year anniversary. And this is the first time we have booked a staycation. And I'll talk to you more in my next video in 4 days time. See ya!
And also, if you want to like laugh, have a good laugh, and look at my nostrils from bottom up, and listen to my <laughs> beautiful playing. It's not beautiful, by the way. Please don't be tricked. Yeah, you can catch my previous video. I think some of you quite like it, and it's a production that I quite enjoy myself making fun of myself. Yeah, that's all for this video. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.